Okay, so today, guys, we we're talking about BMW M54. So this is going to be your E39, E46, X3, X5, guys, Z4, Z3, all that stuff. This is going to be a common misfire and how to fix those misfire videos. It should be very interesting, so stay tuned. All right, guys, so here we are at the E39. Now, there's many things. I've dealt with pretty much all of them multiple times. So I'm gonna share my knowledge with you, if you have one of these cars, what to do when a certain thing happens. Okay, so we got the hood open on this car. We're gonna come in here. Now, the worst case scenario, you go to start this thing, either it won't start, or it starts, it's running very, very rough, um, or you're out driving and it runs rough. So we're gonna start off, the very first thing, Random misfire. So we're gonna have a misfire. As you accelerate, you're gonna feel it kind of cutting out, da, 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 things like that, especially when it's cold. Usually that is a coil pack, ignition coil, which lies up here. Those go bad pretty frequently. If you have the old style valve cover, so a pre-2002 valve cover, they tend to crack a lot more. And you could have oil down the valley. You could have rainwater on the E39 likes to leak in and run down the valve cover and get in the coil pack valley. Um, doesn't matter if you have the cover on it, it'll still leak through and find its way in. Um, that's your running misfire, your light misfire, or it could be your cold start misfire. A cold start misfire could be a coil pack. A cold start misfire could also be the PCV, which runs off this tube. We'll get Philip to come in here real close. This tube runs down under the intake to a PCV valve or CCV on this car and drains back into the uh, dipstick tube and then it runs and feeds vacuum off this. So if that's ruptured, if that diaphragm is broken in that valve, if any of these pipes are cracked whatsoever, you're going to have all kinds of issues like that. Now, also your cold start, your rough cold start, can be your throttle body boots up here. These are rubber, and they get some age on them. These will actually start cracking as they go around, as it goes down to the ICV, the auto control valve, it'll crack. And then that could also be cause of cold misfire. Now, if you're, if you're crank but no start, the first thing you need to do in these cars is come down here and unplug the mass airflow sensor, All right? then try to crank. If it starts up, you probably have a bad sensor. At that point in time, that's not guaranteed. If you're also uh, crank but no start only on hot start, it's probably going to be either the exhaust cam sensor, the intake cam sensor, which is right there, or the crank sensor. And what they do, they get like a little bubble on them and it changes the timing and it moves the sensor closer or further away and the car won't start. Now, that whole system is also linked to back here. You take this out, the ECU lays under this piece and next to the ECU, there's a little five fuse holder that holds five fuses. And a lot of times what'll happen if you're messing around with coil packs or having any kind of problem, it'll blow one of those fuses. That'll give you crank, but no start. So we have a couple more things in this engine. On the front of the engine, we have the Vanos unit itself. The Vanos unit itself has oil rings that seal in there. And if they get dried, dried out, messed up, that is actually going to, it could cause a cold start misfire. Most of the time it's just gonna be down on power, right? Um, they never do get bad to where it keeps the car from running, but it very well could. And at that point in time, the next thing is the DISA. And the DISA will get filled to come in here. The DISA is right here. Uh, this could leak vacuum several different ways. It has a little vacuum pod back here on the back. Uh, if that ruptures, you can have a vacuum leak here. The DISA is just essentially a vacuum operated flap. So whenever you floor it, it opens a flap and opens different runners in the intake. And a lot of guys think that the DISA breaks, it's gonna cause rough idle but it really doesn't. Uh, usually when those break, when you floor it, it doesn't close, so you lose power on wide open throttle. 
usually that's the only problem that causes. Okay, so the next thing is catalytic converters. On these cars that have the catalytic converters are actually on the exhaust manifolds. Now this one's had the Euro flash, so it does not, it doesn't care about catalytic converters. All the secondary air stuff's blocked off. All the oxygen sensor stuff is deleted. But if the catalytic converters get stopped up, it will cause low power. And it, if it gets bad enough, it could definitely cause misfire for sure. Um, that's in a pretty extreme case, I would say. Uh, other than that, cleaning the mass airflow sensor, we have not had any luck cleaning these. Once they go bad and they're causing problems, whether it's a misfire or whether it's a no start or whether it's super rich running, you pretty much need to replace it. The problem is with this car on all these parts, the DISA, the mass airflow, the throttle body boot, the vanal seals, the CCV, all that stuff has to be replaced with legit name brand stuff. You cannot use uh, cheap parts on it because it's not going to work for very long. Same way with the cam sensors. That could run into quite a bit of money. Cam sensors, 50 to 80 bucks a piece. There's two cam sensors and one crank sensor, so they're all at price. A mass airflow, a good mass airflow could run anywhere from 150 to 300 bucks for something somewhat legit. And vandal seals are not too bad. They're, what, 60, 70 bucks for that. And if you have the older car, the pre-2002 car, and you have the older valve cover and it has a crack in the valve cover, that could also cause a vacuum leak, which is gonna cause misfire, lean codes, all this weird stuff to happen. That's pretty much the sum of the misfire uh, situation with this engine. There's not a whole lot else. To do one of these cars up, like this car came in and needed kind of everything. Um, to do all that up, it was about 600 bucks just in miscellaneous things to get this thing a hundred percent and but once you do that if you do it all at once then you're good to go right um, if you don't do it all at once you do one thing at a time it's going to go down the line and it's going to make you break down or have problems non-stop so if you're going to buy one of these cars my advice to you is go ahead and spend the 600 ish dollars on it do everything all in one go That'll get you your coolant lines, that'll get you all the expirable stuff, your pulleys, your belts, and enjoy the car instead of having to worry about it. That's going to be it, guys. Thanks for watching the video. We'll see you later. Have a good day.